This is small town Texas. We are a food pantry with all the bells and whistles for low income people. Perfect. So you want two of this and two of that? Our goal is to try to alleviate poverty as much as we can. We were finding that a lot of our clients who were coming for financial assistance were in debt to payday and auto title lenders. And they come in here for help. And of course, we want to help and do all we can. But far better to pass an ordinance that's going to protect people. You may or may not know this, but th there is an issue with payday lending here in our community. And so, Ms. Jennifer wants to take us through this presentation. Thank you. So, payday or auto title loan is a small dollar loan, a cash advance. You go in and you get $300 for an emergency expense, but you're paying $75 every 14 days for the $300 you borrow. The auto title loan is a little bit different. It's a larger loan. So you might get $4,000 loan, $1,200 is your fee every 30 days. So you can pay back $8,000 and you still owe the original amount of the loan. How, how do we put this illegal practice in legal terms? It's an interesting question. During the oil bust in the 80s, there were a lot of people who suddenly had credit problems who had never before had them. So the legislature packed the Credit Service Organization Act, the CSO Act, which was designed to have nonprofit organizations help a borrower to access credit even though they had bad credit so they could repair it. 2004, the lenders get together and they start looking, combing through state law. They found the CSO loophole. The CSO has no limit on the fee they charge because the assumption was it was nonprofits not charging fees. Lenders immediately took advantage, and we went from like 300 or 400 payday lenders in 2004 in Texas to 3,200 payday lenders in 2014 in Texas. More than Whataburger, McDonald's, and Starbucks combined. Some of that one to title match. You know, it's not good. It's hot in here. We don't turn the AC on. I'm kind of a penny pincher, I guess you'd say. But so that's the way I was raised. I can. You can see some of that up there on that shelf. I get the Ziploc bags after I've used them. If they don't have a hole in them, I wash them out and use them again. My husband thinks I'm crazy, but uh, it saves a lot of money in the long run. There, Title Max. We borrowed four thousand. The total payments four thousand five hundred and seven dollars.
we had to get a loan against my husband's truck because mm -hmm. not enough work and one thing to another. We're coming to you all for help. If we wasn't, didn't need to, we wouldn't. My husband is dying of cancer. And, uh, of course, I've had three strokes and a heart attack, bypass, and all that good stuff. But, I mean, that's something you deal with. Yeah. So anything I can do to pay you back, you know, we'd well, be glad to do. First of all, I'm so sorry to hear that this has happened. Yeah. I would love to be able to just walk in and pay off this loan, but we don't have the financial means. Help me understand, you, do you still have that $4,000 principal to pay off? Yes. The payments are 500 a month, mm -hmm. and I've got to come up with the 4000 at one time in order to keep the truck. Yeah. And it's not possible on a fixed income? No. If I, did, if I had the money to do that, I would have bought, got the loan <laughs> to begin with. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the loan was not explained that you just pay all this for nothing. Uh-huh more or less, you know, it's giving it to them. I might as well give it to you and go for a good cause. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few cases where we have helped people pay off their loans. Those are in really dire situations, but that's not something sustainable that we can always do. There are alternatives that are in the works for people who need uh, small dollar loans to be able to get those loans from a better place that is easier for them to pay back, but those are still in the process of getting off the ground. So you just feel like we can point them to uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, they can file complaints there, but there are no really great solutions as of yet. We're still working on them. So something that's kind of unique to Texas is that we are in the Bible Belt, if you knew the sport of a community, one of the most effective ways to communicate with people, to get a hold of people, is through churches. We have seen that people from the faith community have said, no, this isn't okay, and we want to do something about it. What's happening is we became really alarmed when many of those who came to seek help from us, whether it was to take care of rent or, or medication, we found out that at least one third of them in this whole state uh, now have these type of uh, loans with the payday lenders. Why is it important to the church? Because it's wrong to treat people that way. It is wrong to go to people who are already in a bind and design something to make the bind worse. It's, it's a great business model for them if you want to exploit people. God is concerned about the impoverished, about those who are poor, about those who are down on their luck, and there's no way that you can call yourself moral, ethical, spiritual, and exploit poor people. At the state level, it's, it's, it's been a very challenging fight. I mean, we're, we're definitely up against Goliath. The legislature created the problem. It needs to be fixed. The business of quick and easy cash is coming under scrutiny as Representative Tom Craddock prepares a bill to regulate the payday loan industry. Well, thank you very much for being here. This is a pretty sad day in the state of Texas, I think. We've got the number one state in income and jobs in the country, and yet we're charging the highest rates of any state in the nation on, on payday loans. In 2011, we introduced a bill in the House. They had one in the Senate. When we first introduced it, it was almost 50-50 Republican and Democrats. Senator Davis, who's a Democrat, she did the Senate version, I did the House versions. There truly hasn't been an issue that I've worked harder on than the payday lending reform. You had Tom Craddock, strong Republican on the House side. And you had me, a uh, very liberal Texas senator on the Senate side. I used to joke that we knew we were on to something when you had not only Tom Craddock and Wendy Davis, but you also had the Catholics and the Baptists working on the same side. 
Thank you for the opportunity to testify. My name is Stephen Reeves, and I serve as legislative counsel for the Texas Baptist Christian Life Commission. I'm Frederick Haynes. I'm the senior pastor of Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. The Catholic bishops call on legislators to close the CSO loop. We've tried to pass a bill. What happens is it goes to a committee first. The chair lays out uh, HB 3047 as pending business. The committee is where bills get negotiated and written for the opportunity then to be heard on the floor. So let's talk about the tricks that are played in committees at the state level. The payday lending industry and their lobby make sure that these bills are put into committees where the likelihood of passing a bill out with any teeth to it is pretty small. And they've been very effective in getting to the committee chairman or majority of the committee, and they can kill these bills or never bring it up for a vote. If there are no objections, the chair will leave HB 3047 pending. Hearing none, HB 3047 is left pending here in committee. HB 2803 is left pending. The chair will leave HB 2808 pending. HB 2808 is left pending. After 2011, when the state failed to enact meaningful reform, people of faith and, and people in the advocate community, they got busy at the local level. I mean, Temple is a, a fairly small Texas town. It's a very family-oriented kind of place. Football's really big. There are pockets of affluence and then pockets of poverty uh, in Temple. Payday loans, or auto title loans, doors, they tend to congregate in lower income areas. Clearly they're putting payday lender shops very near places where folks find themselves in emergencies, medical facilities, hospitals, urgent care. In times of desperation, when there's maybe a car accident or a family member who's ill, people will borrow from a payday and auto title loan company without realizing the ramifications. ACE had in their, uh, I guess, their training manual, like a circle. And in that circle, it showed how you uh, borrowed the money, but you never could pay it back. Like this, this is in the training manual for, for an employee of one of these businesses. So they know that their business model is designed for people to fail. They know that. And they don't care. They don't care. To have organizations which are willing to loan people money when they're desperate is a very good thing. But 500% interest on, on loans is immoral. It is un-American, besides being sinful, too. because there's not a whole lot happening at the state level. The city level is really our best bet to bring about meaningful changes. So we're looking at what happened in Dallas as an example or sort of as a model of what uh, might happen here in Temple. So the ordinance is the local authority. It's a local law. It is basically the most powerful thing that a city can do to address a problem in the local area. Texans never like bullies. We've never liked bullies. We're not gonna tolerate it. We're gonna stand up. We worked to craft an ordinance essentially to keep the products honest. So if you're selling a short-term loan, let's make sure that it really is a short-term loan. It ensures that the payments made reduce the principal, and that's really critical. We got started ASAP to get the ordinance done. And with my audience being packed by my faith-based people and with my uh, nonprofits. Then it was unanimous vote by the city of Dallas. That was a great day. But if you ask the payday industry, we upset their little gravy train. Needless to say, that word got out. When we saw Dallas pass the ordinance there in their own city, we said, that's possible here in our own city. We can also do that. 
And so we mobilized. Some cities are not waiting for Congress to act. City council members and residents are meeting to discuss a couple of possible new ordinances. We had these uh, payday lending uh, roadshows uh, that we took to other cities throughout the state. It is time to end the cycle and offer families protection from this abuse. They lent me $750 to make my way through a financial emergency. But then those fees, which are about 700%, now require me to get out of the $2,500 uh, did. We show them the options of payday lending alternatives and ordinances. The local leaders make a decision as to what works best in their community and typically end up pursuing a local ordinance from that point forward. San Antonio, El Paso, Austin, Houston. I was so proud. I was so proud. These cities and towns, and it doesn't matter whether it was Houston, Texas, fourth largest city in America. When Houston passes something that began in Dallas, that's a thing, because uh, our cities have this sense of rivalry. And I'm so glad to say that we're brothers and sisters. I'm just so proud. Yay. I wish I could say they'd been passed by my hometown of Fort Worth. Unfortunately, the city council nor the mayor there have shown the temerity to do something about this issue. Texas is known as a very pro-business environment. It's not a very friendly environment to looking at regulating any business. I think the assumption is always that the business is right. Sadly, city by city by city is the only way we've been able to protect people in this state. Good morning. Good morning. The Temple City Council is voting on payday lending ordinances. They're going to be voting. We could use all of the support we can get. And if you would just keep us in your prayers, that would be wonderful. Thanks. We know that Temple City Council is going to vote on this. Um, from what we understand, it, it looks like it may not be in favor of the ordinances. When payday lending was first brought up, there was some opposition from city council members. We are just working to get support for the ordinance, communicating to city council members that this is how we'd like you to vote. Rucker developed a, a letter that people emailed to the city council and to the mayor. We also had a bunch of postcards that just said, hey, I encourage you to vote yes. We distributed, I want to say, like 1,200 of those. So I don't know how many of those made it in the mail, but I think a lot of them did. Now we're working to mobilize other community leaders and pastors. The Helping Hands organization asked if I would come and speak before the city council on behalf of that ordinance. And so I'm going to. Done a lot of research on how uh, the opposing side views this. And one of the big issues is more government intervention into our lives, which I can understand. I, <laughs> I struggle with that too. Um, but the idea that this helps protect the citizens of this city, uh, I think is what will sway the city council. You know, people who need money can be taken advantage of. Historically in the United States, there were very tough laws about it, about uh, interest rates, and many of those made them made it into the state constitutions. Texas has a 10% per year limit on interest. What we've seen, though, is a strategic uh, avoidance of those laws, and it's just really expanded across the country in a very deliberate way because there's a large industry behind it.
The industry is fighting back in Washington through very generous campaign contributions. Controversial payday loan industry. Both Jeff Hensarling and Pete Sessions are suspected of taking campaign contributions from payday lenders, closely followed by their votes to protect the industry from threatening legislation. <laughs> Hearing is entitled the semi-annual report of the Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection. These businesses are so effective in their work with politicians that they don't even need to speak because the members of the committee use their talking points. You're coming down here picking on the people who are making loans to people just trying to pay the rent on the end of the month. That is discrimination against African Americans when your rule and your action denies them access to that car. I will say this, that many of my colleagues uh, did not walk, walk away with much confidence in the direction that you're headed. Payday lenders have the money of all the poor people in our community that they have robbed to spend on lobbyists. So really the only hope we have of a national solution in the present political climate is effective regulation from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. <laughs> Our central responsibility is to stand on the side of consumers and see that they're treated fairly. When the CFPB found out about our roadshow, they called and asked, can we come and join you on one of your roadshow stops? And now I'd like to introduce Director Richard Cordray. Thank you for convening such an impressive group uh, and a group that has our admiration and respect for the work that you do every day on the front lines with people who are in need. We have come here because we want to hear from you and know more about how you want us to proceed. At this moment in time, at this juncture in history, we actually have somebody who has the authority to do something meaningful and really move the needle, and that's him. You know, I mean, you look at the whole apparatus of government and it comes down to you have a pen that can change this. And so here's what I try to do. I pray regularly and faithfully for Director Cordray. When you know there are millions of people who are counting on you and a couple of dozen people who are assaulting you, we hope you'll hear from us. We are so grateful for the work you're doing, Director Cordray, for your staff, for the thoroughness with which you're doing it, and we are with you. Thank you. So Temple City Council is meeting tonight to vote on ordinances. There's a good chance that um, someone from the payday lending industry will be there tonight and will speak at the meeting. We've worked really hard to help meet people's needs in terms of uh, food and finances. But if we could have backing from the public sector and have them be playing a role as well in protecting people from predatory lenders, that's huge. Will the city council vote for this ordinance? I, I don't really know. I hope that it'll go through, but I'm not I'm not sure that it will. I think it is a risk. I mean, anytime you become more public uh, with your stance or get involved in those different arenas, it, it can cause some kind of interesting feelings. Um, people oppose it. You guys just do the religious part. Let us handle the rest of the part. And uh, I just don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Temple City Council. Please rise as Mayor Pro Tem Russell Schneider leads us in the invocation. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we just thank you for this great city. Guide us and direct us as, as we go. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. They have had so many people that they've heard from in the city. It's their job to represent their constituents. So I, I hope and pray that they will act accordingly. 
Item 5, consider adopting an ordinance related to regulating credit access businesses, commonly referred to as payday lenders. The ordinance requires a loan must be repaid in no more than four installments, and at least 25% of each installment payment has to go toward uh, the principal amount of the loan and not to fees. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter may do so. Uh, Bill DeGatano speaking tonight as the president of the United Way of Central Texas. I was pleased to hear that council is investigating the payday and auto title loan policies. I know you've received postcards, letters, emails, phone calls, and personal visits. This is an issue that matters deeply to many of your constituents. Ronnie Marriott, pastor of First Baptist Temple. Uh, and I wrote this out so as not to preach. Um, as a faith leader, I also have a responsibility to protect the people of our community, just as this council does. As a city council, you have an opportunity to be a good Samaritan for those who have been abused and taken advantage of by others. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Who else wishes to speak on this? I got real excited reading everybody's name off, and now nobody wants to go in. <laughs> Some politicians are going to vote the way they want to, regardless of what their constituents have to say. If there is community support for something, it's harder to ignore that. Well, if there is no one else wishing to speak, I will declare the public hearing closed. Mayor, I, I a business owner, and I do, I do not think it's the city's responsibility to tell a business how much they can make. I just don't believe that's right. I don't think anyone likes a lot of regulations, but that's what we stand up here and do all the time is vote on different regulations for anything, from, from the roads to buildings, where they are, whatever. And let's again take care of our citizens, just like um, Pastor mentioned before. This is what we are instructed to do. You know, this is a difficult topic for all of us, I think, to, to consider. I do not feel like it is the city's role to be regulating this. I wish that the state or the federal government was involved in it, but with their lack of doing anything about it, I think we're the source that needs to, to step in like many other cities in the state have. I have a hard time regulating a business that, that again, has customers. There's a reason why uh, there's a market for this, and it's because these typically are higher risk folks. 522%, I understand that. But if it was such a horrible place to do business, um, I think that, you know, looking at it personally, I'm in a business that is regulated but the, the regulations that, that are put upon our businesses, it's typically because somebody has not done what they're supposed to be doing. I understand that you know, there are ideological decisions and, and feelings that people have, but I think that this is the opportunity for us to do something right and do something that, that helps those that may not have the opportunity to uh, to seek help in any other way. Comments? I make a motion for approval. Second. Councilmember Clow? Aye. Councilmember Davis? No. Mayor Pro Tem Schneider? No. Councilmember Morales? Aye. Mayor Dunn? Aye. You may remember that I had asked you all to pray about the city council meeting because we were going and speaking and just asking the city council to pass the ordinance against payday loan businesses. And I'm happy to say that it passed. Yeah. I think that we're gonna have clients who are gonna continue to take out payday loans. I think that what's going to be so important is that they will be able to make more manageable payments, pay it off more easily, keep more money in their pocket, and that's just a stepping stone towards not being in poverty.
which is ultimately what we want. When I hear that uh, an ordinance passes in a community, I'm very proud and happy about that. It means to me that people have become aware of an issue and they've taken action. Uh, the best way to judge a society how well it's doing is how well families are doing and how well the poor and the vulnerable are being taken care of. The local ordinances shows what's really possible when churches and pastors stand up and engage and uh, partner together with nonprofits and other people uh, to try and make a positive change for their city. I'm tickled to death at finally trying to do something about it. I, I would love to get me up there and push them right along, you know? Tonight, Mesquite became the ninth North Texas city to approve to regulate those businesses. The Texas City Councilman plans to introduce a proposed ordinance this week to crack down on so-called cash advance and vehicle title lenders. City Council today held the first of two public hearings on a proposed ordinance to regulate the payday and title loan industries. The city of College Station has unanimously approved adding more regulations for quick cash loan companies that charge huge interest rates. And I'm glad that the cities are doing what the legislature failed to do in the last session. I'm delighted to be here today as part of a broad network of uh, nonprofits, faith-based organizations, and the faith community in support of addressing payday and auto title lending practices. Here. And, and I'm going I'm to step out of my moderator role for a minute. This is a horrible practice that needs to be curbed. 